Hey, everybody, uh, we are just going to open up the room and have everybody start filing in. Uh, and Jessica, we're going to kind of do, I'm going to put, I'm going to, while you're explaining this, I'm, I'm going to put it in the chat. So what is one <laughs> of your favorite childhood toys? So Jessica, what was one of your favorite childhood toys? What was like the thing that you just loved to play with more than anything? Oh gosh, I have to admit I had a lot of toys. <laughs> Something that stands out is, do you remember the 100, 101 Dalmatians animated movie? Yeah. It's old, eh? <laughs> yeah. And it, yeah, it was having a moment and I got Patch, one of the dogs, like the plush of Patch for Christmas. And he's so cute. Um, I still remember seeing him under the tree and he had a little red collar. And I, I actually found him again at Goodwill. It was like, oh like I was so excited. It's like, I, I need you back in my life. My <laughs> sister was there. I found Patch and she found Pongo. Wow. Like, yeah. We just, we couldn't believe it. So, yeah. You know, you, about, you, you get some pretty freaking good Goodwill finds, sister. It's really amazing. Some of this, this too. Stuff. This is from Valley Village, but you know, it's all, it's all thrifting. Yeah. Huh. What about oh. for you? Yeah, so I still have mine. Uh, so mine is a, uh, this is going to surprise some of the audience, but uh, it's, a, it's a Muppet. Uh, it's actually the animal puppet from the 1979 release of, um, of, of, of a whole series of Muppets. There was Rolf, Miss Piggy, Kermit, and uh, an animal. An animal's eyebrows go up and down, and I still what? have him uh, as of today, and I actually still play with him uh, uh, often uh, just because his eyebrows are just so magnificent, and you can really tell. One of these days, I'll bring it in, uh, and I'll show people because it's beat up. This thing has been loved to death. So we've got um, Lois said mouse trap. Wow. Dude, that was the most frustrating game in the world to put yeah. together. It was a game uh, as a, yeah, oh my gosh. And then, and then Shannon, um, oh, Drooper. Oh, and the banana, banana splits. Oh, Stretch Armstrong. Dude, I loved I, him. His dog. Oh my God. That's all I cared about was his dog. That is, oh my gosh. I forgot yeah. about that. Um, oh, I, sure. so I never had Stretch Armstrong. I had the green guy. Um, which I don't remember what the, just, uh, Shannon, do you remember what the, the, the green guy's name was? No, it wasn't Gumby Richard. <laughs> <laughs> it was part of the stretch Armstrong, uh, thing. Anyway, Gumby. you know, what was the worst thing about stretch Armstrong. And then I promise you we'll get into this is when it broke. Gumby. Oh my God. And oh. Cheryl was going to say Gumby. That's fantastic. All right. So, so, okay. Okay. So we, we, we need to get into this stuff. We could talk about pets and toys and, and all sorts of stuff all day long. Yes, I did have gooey stuff all over the place, Cheryl. That is absolutely correct. Oh, it was called yeah. Monster. Ooh, I didn't remember oh. that. All right, sister, let's get rolling. Right. Yeah, and these, the toys, it's, it's going to come back later in this <laughs> webinar. There's a, there's a reason, believe it or not. There's a reason we asked. Okay, so let's get rolling. We are here to talk about LinkedIn engagement because here's the thing. Millions of decision makers are logging into LinkedIn and they're there to network, they're there to have conversations. It is such a great place for advisors to reach new prospects and deepen relationships with clients. But <laughs> for any of that to happen, you have to be visible, you have to be seen. And every post, well, your posts can't be monologues, they must become conversation starters. So today we're talking about how to rise above the noise on LinkedIn and drive more engagement to your posts. During this session, we will talk about what's getting engagement on LinkedIn right now, so you can try it out for yourself. We'll unpack five engagement electrifiers with real examples <laughs> from advisors. And then we are going to do a live review of advisor posts that we found in our feed these are engaging posts that I think everyone can learn from. So you can start writing your attention grabbing posts. All right, let's keep going. But oh, first, Matt, go ahead. Yeah. 
Yes. So we had the absolute privilege. Uh, we, we flew and brought everybody into Oshawa, Ontario last week. Uh, now I've seen Jessica a number of times cause she's actually our, our most senior employee that we have in our organization, uh, besides Kirk and I, um, and, um, and it was so wonderful to be able to see everybody again. Uh, it was just a wonderful retreat. And this picture that we took was front of, in front of the um, Parkwood estate. Um, and man, Jessica and I totally nerded out at this place. This place is absolutely unbelievable. And um, it was just so wonderful to see like the invention and the ingenuity of this, this really, really cool thing. But what was really cool is being able to hang out with all of the people on our team. And, and Jessica, you really enjoyed that too. Yes. And oh my gosh, this place was really, really cool. I feel like I sound irreverent by calling it this place. This is a, you know, historical house. It was owned by Sam McLaughlin, who started GM. And there are so many cool like TV shows and movies filmed at the Parkwood Estate. Uh, the X-Men, I think it was the first one. It was shot in 2000. The Umbrella Academy, Billy Madison, you know, we walked the same path as Hugh Jackman, probably. Yes. Well, that's <laughs> what we're cool telling to ourselves. About. That's yes. Yes. Okay. Let's dive in. First, what is engagement on LinkedIn? Let's make sure we're on the same page. LinkedIn defines engagement as the total of reactions, comments, and reposts. And then the LinkedIn engagement rate measures how many people interact with your posts relative to the number of impressions. And then just in case, um, impressions refers to how many times your post appears on the screen or in the feed. And that's regardless of whether someone clicked on it or not. Now, LinkedIn has an engagement, you know, a way to calculate the engagement rate. This is like very basic <laughs> total engagement. So again, that is your reactions, your comments and shares divided by your impressions times 100% to get that nice percentage. And a company that specializes in social media analytics called Social Insider, they calculated the current LinkedIn engagement rate when they published it this past March. So it's pretty current, but they calculated it at 3.85%, 3.85%. So just knowing that number can give you some perspective on, on how you're doing with your engagement rate. If you're in the ballpark of 3,000, I'm going to say you're doing, you know, you're doing pretty well. And then just for the fun of it, we calculated the engagement rate on this post with Matt, Derek. Um, and I just wanted to show you too, where to find the numbers as well. You could also view analytics to get this breakdown here and 3.35% engagement rate, you know, pretty good. Okay. Now let's look at key findings from Social Insider to talk about what's generating engagement right now. And I just want to read you in case you're interested <laughs> on the methodology. This study's data set included accounts with an active presence on LinkedIn between January 2022 and December 2023. They only considered pages with followers from 1,000 to a million to eliminate any outliers that could skew average engagement or impressions. Mm -hmm. And please, oh my gosh, use these ideas for your company pages and for your LinkedIn profile. Both have a place, but we know like from studies that LinkedIn profiles, like your posts tend to get more engagement. People want to interact with people. And if you're not already, it's time for you to be that spokesperson for your firm. Okay. The first key finding, Matt, is that posts with multiple images we're getting the most likes and comments, you know, compared to any other post type. And Social Insider said that this is for um, large accounts. What do you, does this surprise you? It, it doesn't really surprise me. And, and I'm so glad that you use this example for, for a number of reasons. Uh, the, the first reason is if, you, if you're not following Elena, you should. But just look at the sequence of shots that they have. Those pictures really truly tell a quick story. And, and it also tells a story about her and um, it, her hashtag strategy is really strong, right? She's referencing different things here. It, there's just 
this this post really is firing on all cylinders, in, in my opinion, um, just because it, it really highlights her personality. It's part of who she is. It's really on brand for her. Um, and, and it's wildly engaging. It's just wildly engaging. Yeah, just super eye catching. And there's there's so like this post reads to me like it was just effortless, effortlessly written. I would love to know Elena's process, but there's so much substance. She's giving us a life update about visiting her best friend from high school. Mm -hmm. She's taking us with her on her nature walk. I just love it. A social insider, they recommended, you know, what is the perfect like dream combination to get a major increase in your engagement? And it was the pairing the multiple images with a caption, but get this, a caption of 19 words or under. Isn't that short? Like that surprises me. Oh, Matt, I think you're on mute. Sorry, I, I was that. giggling really oh. loudly there. So that's, uh, uh, yeah, listen, it unbelievably short, unbelievably short night. I mean, talk about having to write succinctly. I can't believe you could really, I mean, I don't think you could communicate what Elena communicated here in 19 words, but it's, it's fascinating that that's what they said. I know. And they also said the common denominator for high engagement is the multiple images. So you can have more text and still get really great engagement. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's about giving your audience what they want and seeing what they respond to. And they want this. Yeah. <laughs> they have responded here. Okay. Let's keep going. And in the chat, we would love to hear your responses to these key findings as well. Okay. So the second one, video as the most shared content. So video, they said it's not getting the most engagement yet. And I believe they mean in terms of um, reactions and comments, but it's getting shared, which means, you know, that's more impressions, that's more awareness for your brand. And I was wondering about, you know, what motivates people to share content. And I found a study by the New York Times customer insight group called the psychology of sharing, you know, why do people share online? And a major reason was to share information. People want to share information that's valuable and entertaining. 94% of participants, you know, before they share, they ask themselves, will this be useful to my recipient? And one of the participants said, I share to enrich the lives of others. Like, yeah. that's so, that's so nice. What do you think, well, Matt? Well, well, it, it is really nice. And, and there's, there's a couple of things about what you just said that I think is really important to, if, if I am sharing something like this, right. Uh, it also shows that I am paying attention, um, that I'm interested and in that I'm going to help participate in your education. You know, we talk about Dr. Robert Cialdini's principles of influence often, and, and this really ticks a number of those, but the other thing that I want Want. And I know Cheryl Hickerson, who's on, uh, and I have talked about this before, uh, is, you know, sharing videos and memes like on TikTok or Instagram or whatever is actually people's love language too. Uh, you know, being able to send somebody something that's heartfelt, warm, loving, caring um, are, are just absolutely fantastic. It just shows that you're paying attention and you're thinking about the person. And a lot of these videos, and this one's a really good example, it's a short video. So you're also showing that you're being respectful of their time, but you just want them to pause for a minute and, and appreciate and think and be grateful that you're thinking of them. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I like how this clip here um, from our client, Sean Peterson is pure entertainment in it. I listened to it earlier. He's, he's talking about one of Katy Perry's music videos and like the pyramids and speculating on what it means. So anyone who's interested in Katy Perry or just really pop, you know, pop culture, pop music is going to be interested in this video. Matt, you made a good point before about when we share videos, we've already vetted them for our audience. Can you talk about that again? Um, um, I'm sorry. I was just reading. I, I totally, dude, you can be mad at me. I'm gonna have to have you have, but I, I was just reading Lois's comment here and I'm trying to understand what she's saying. So, so ask me the question again. I'm, I'm sorry. I should not have been reading uh, her, her text there. No, no, that's okay. I think you made a good point the other day about when people share videos, mm -hmm. they've already vetted them. Ah, ah, yes, yes, yes. And so it, that, that's another huge component of this is it, it, 
I don't show videos, especially in a professional setting like this, unless I know, like, and trust the person who is being, that video is being created by. Um, it, it just, I, I don't know. It just really helps. It just increases the confidence, especially like on, on something professional, like LinkedIn specifically, if I'm sharing a video, it's going out to a very broad network. And I want to make sure that I have vetted that person. I don't share things like that very, very lightly, like, like at all. Uh, right. I, I, I really put a lot of thought into that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm reading, <laughs> I'm reading the chat as well. No, oh, goodness gracious. How are we what supposed are, to talk and oh, manage this at the same time? What? What are, yes, yes. Thanks so much, Lois. What are some tangible elements of a shareable video? Oh, wow. Okay. So, Wow, that that now that could be a presentation entirely uh, on its own. Uh, but now we are going to talk a little bit about this because we've got uh, these five engagement electrifiers that we're going to continue to uh, or that we're going to dive into in just a minute. So, Lois, I think we're actually going to answer that for you. Uh, and so, yeah, so uh, let, let, let us keep going and I, we will get to that answer, I promise. So. All right. All right. And then our third key finding is polls generating the highest impression rate in 2024 on LinkedIn. This this surprised me a little bit. I, I see the utility and the appeal of polls because they are low effort, you know, mm -hmm. for our audience to respond to. I, I just didn't expect them to play this, you know, this high of a role, like the highest impression rate. How about you? I, di I didn't either. Uh, and in fact, you know, this is one of those things where um, that that I scroll past a lot of these but it's interesting because even though I scroll past a lot of them, Jess, it, it, it's like, oh, you're clicking on one thing. You're right? it, like, I mean, I, I read it, right? And all I have to do is click a yes, no, or maybe so, or, you know, ranges or anything like that. I can totally see how this would be a great way to engage the audience. Um, I just don't know from a, and I'm thinking from a sales and marketing perspective, or especially from a sales perspective, I don't really know how this is really going to help me because I mean, am I going to know the people who clicked? Yes. Meh. Uh, I would rather have them engaging more with comments or direct messages, but um, it's just, it's too easy to interact with this. And now, now let's, let's look at this though. Mm -hmm, this is mm -hmm. so, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to deconstruct this for a minute. I think we, we, we planned for this because we talked about this. Um, if not, just tell me, shut up, we'll move on. But <laughs> look, look, look at the opening line. Have you, ever been an executor of someone's estate? Yes, no, no, but I will be. Here's the deal. You are going to be. And so even if you are and have been an executor, or if you haven't been an executor, this post is perfect for you. Uh, and it also, it, regardless if you have been an executor or not, you're probably going to want to listen to the podcast when it comes out. So this is one of those social media posts that, again, is just ticking a whole bunch of boxes. Um, and it's one of the reasons why uh, you know, it did look at 40 comments, everybody. I mean, 40 comments who, who very few people get 40 comments. Um, and, and then if you look at the 40 comments versus the 21 likes and shares, uh, or, or the likes and, you know, feelings, that's, that's a wonderful thing. And she got 93 votes on this. So really, really good engagement here. Yeah. I, I like you're saying, I like that she's priming people for the release of this mm -hmm. episode. You know, this, group of 25% that's saying, no, but I will be like, what, you know, what a highly relevant topic for them. She's tagged the guest so the guests can start promoting their episode. And there's a little bit of a, a dual call to action going on, but it, it works really well. She, Christine has the poll. Have you ever been an executor? But then she's asking in the post, if you've been an executor, would you agree, you know, that it's um, about these common common mistakes. And that's what's really helping to fuel the discussion where Christine is responding to everyone's comments and, and building those relationships. And if she wanted to, she, you know, she could use those experiences that she's hearing in the comments to help promote the episode, to help give voice to what, you know, real executors have experienced and what the episode is going to help solve. It's so many social media posts, Jess, right? So, I mean, I you know. could say, you know, she could do two or three on the yes and two or three on the no. And then she could do what, by the way, Kristen does really well. Christine does really well is she can, you know, make that somewhat controversial to get more and more attention uh, on those social media posts. So, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Yes. Great use of a poll. Okay. Yeah. 
Next, we're going through the engagement electrifiers to help you turn your interaction up to 11. And okay, Matt, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, first off, I love that this is called the Invisible Force. One, because I'm a huge Star Wars fan or Harry Potter fan or any fan uh, that has to do with magic <laughs> or superpowers. But we highlighted this post because I don't think people truly, somebody would just look at this and they'd be like, oh, that's nice. What Ben is sharing here is exactly the mindset and intention that all of your posts need to have. Look, look at this, right? Is it going to align with who you are as a human, right? We, very few of us start our posts with that filter. Second, is it going to solve a problem, right? Uh, people are going online and reading social media posts to answer questions, to solve problems, to make them think. Next one. I love this. Surprises me, catches me off guard. And we're, by the way, we've got a wonderful example of this. Uh, but just, you know, whether it's a picture, uh, whether it's, you know, a, a bold statement, uh, which which we know works very well. And in fact, um, and you don't have to go back, but if, if you go back and listen to this presentation and rewind it, if you look at the conspiracy theory uh, video clip, it's in big letters, conspiracy theory. People are going to click on that, right? They're going to absolutely love that. And then last is you know, providing value to me and, and or my network. <clears throat> this is the intention that when you're writing social media posts, it has to be something that you keep mindful. And after you write it, before you hit post, go through these four things and see how many of those four things you check. And if you check all of them, even three out of the four, you're going to get much more engagement on the post because what a lot of us do, Jessica, is it's me, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm so smart, 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 right? Whereas this... This is just, it's such a different feeling. And by the way, if you don't yes. follow Ben, you should, um, because this is how he posts. Yes, yes, 100%. And the other part of this, Matt, I'd love, to, I'd love for you to speak to is being social, on social. Yeah, yes. yeah. So so one of the reasons why Ben has grown his audience uh, uh, quite well, and, and, and I'm going to use a couple of other people like Lois uh, and, and Cheryl Hickerson specifically who are on this call, um, one of the things that they do, um, actually, I'm sorry, and, and so, does, uh, so does Shannon, one of the things that is, I'm assuming, part of their strategy um, is they like, share, and comment on other people's posts. And algorithmically, this is vitally important because if Ben Galloway comments on Matt Halloran's post, Matt Halloran is going to see more of Ben Galloway's posts. And if Matt posts, uh, you know, comments on Cheryl Hickerson's post or or any of the Lois's posts or anything, then those posts are going to show up more in my feed because the algorithm knows that I am interested in those things. Very few of you are doing that. Having an active commenting strategy, um, especially with people who you want to gain access to their audience, is absolutely powerful and is a total electrifier of your LinkedIn content. Excellent. And then a question I have for you is how can, how can advisors engage consistently without it becoming like their full-time job? Yeah. So, so when I was a coach and a consultant, one of the first things that I would do is I would do a time analysis on every one of my clients. I would force them to take a two week period and write down what they were doing at 15 minute increments. And, and all of you know, this, oh, there's a lot of wasted time, uh, you know, doing <laughs> stupid stuff that isn't a really good use of their time. So one of the things that I would implement, this was right after my first book came out, um, about social media was that you you needed to allocate three different times a day to spend anywhere from five to 10 minutes on social media. Um, and so that would be, you know, when you're having your coffee in the morning, you know, when you're kind of warming up for the day, spend five, 10 minutes on LinkedIn, scroll around, make a couple of shares, a couple of comments or whatever, couple of likes. Uh, then, then generally at the end of lunch is another really great time to do that. And then after markets close or after the day, your day is done, then take a few more minutes. This needs to become a habit. And you, and, and by the way, you are, you are totally able to like and comment on other people's things. As long as you don't say the stupid stuff that you know that you're not supposed to say, even saying things like what a great post or thank you for sharing. None of that is an endorsement. None of that is a testimonial. Now there are going to be people who argue with me on that, but that's one of the most powerful things that you can do uh, when it comes to this. 
because you have to build it into a discipline. And three times a day might sound like a lot, but I promise all of you, you're wasting 30 minutes in your day doing very unproductive things uh, that you could be doing this and, and it can be hugely beneficial to you. Excellent. Thank you. Next one. Make it zero click. Who here has heard of this term? Zero click content. It's become u- ubiquitous. Thank you to, I mean, other marketers, but it's coined by Amanda Natividad of Spark Toro. And I want to make sure that she gets credit and zero click content. It's content that provides standalone value where you are. So without requiring you to click off of the platform, without requiring you to leave LinkedIn. So if you want to promote a, a, a podcast, maybe you're debunking three myths you might debunk one of the myths in your post and then to hear the other two, listen to the full podcast. So zero click content may still contain a link in this case, you know, hear the other two myths, but it can exist without the link. People are still gaining something from it. And this is such an important point for engagement because people need something. If we want people to react and comment they need something to comment on and it needs to be frictionless. So asking someone to go listen to my podcast or or go read my blog and tell me what you think, like, you know, giving people homework and we're all, we're all busy enough. Some people will just do that on their own and it's wonderful. Let them do that if they want to, but don't, don't limit the way they interact to, you know, share your, listen to this first and then share your thoughts, open it up. And we are going to see an example. And Matt, I know you have a lot of comments on this one by our Pod Rocket Influence Academy member, Lauren Sherman. I do. So, so Nancy, by the way, asked a question a few minutes ago about hashtags, and I'm going to address that using this post. So for some reason, people have taken uh, the the stance that hashtags uh, don't work. Uh, that is not true. And it's not true for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one is because that's actually how the algorithm helps you find things. Um, and hashtags are unbelievably useful. So for instance, in this one, you could click on hashtag podcast, retirement, golf, or investment invest retirement planning. And it's going to show every single solitary post, uh, that, that you have there. Now, what, what happens a lot of times is too many people use too many hashtags and you really need to have a three to five hashtag strategy, uh, which is really powerful, but, but let's, let's break into this Lauren Sherman's post. First off, he's sharing something from another source, which is the Rice Lake golf club and country club, right? which gets Rice Lake's attention, right? Which which is really good for him because that's a place where he does a lot of networking and he loves to play golf. The other thing that I absolutely love about this so much is this, if you, and many of you have not met Lauren, but the voice that's here and his humility, his humor, um, how easy it was for him to gently direct you to the show uh, that he wants you to listen to is is really a masterclass in, in short form, really engaging sales copy. You might not think this is sales copy, but that's exactly what this is. Here's another thing, right? Multiple images, right? Uh, you know, when Jessica yeah. and I were going through this, I was like, Jessica, look at all these things that, that this ticks those boxes. Um, multiple images, really personal, um, j- uh, g- great shots. Um, yeah. And, and I also, I love the level of humility here. I just, I just think it's absolutely fantastic. You know, um, did we put that, uh, we didn't put that in there. Okay. I was, I didn't know if we wanted to share that, that link with people, but, um, by the way, he's, he, his show is fantastic. And just very quickly, Lauren is a, one of the very few people uh, who did all of this on his own, right? So he went into our Pod Rocket Influence Academy. He took all of the courses and he launched his own show and he's doing very, very well with it. So Jess, what, what do you think about this puppy? I really like how at the end he promotes his podcast, but in such a, like a soft, subtle way. And it's such a natural transition from talking about the 
golf competition, sorry, championship. I have, I have no idea what I'm saying when it comes to, when it comes to golf. <laughs> if I were to change one thing, I would yeah. maybe put just one sentence about what they cover in the episode, but I love this. I, that was just, a, you know, if there's one thing, but sure. yeah, he did. He did a wonderful job. It is a great example of zero click content where I'm getting entertainment. I'm learning about Lauren and I didn't have to leave LinkedIn in order to do it. Okay. Let's keep going. Break the ice. This is really just the thread throughout this webinar with the examples we're showing. Here's the thing. I know that it's important for advisors to have educational and financial content, including LinkedIn posts. It shows that you know your stuff. It proves to your niche that you know exactly how to serve them. You know the ins and the outs. But I'm going to suggest that those purely educational posts aren't the easiest for people who aren't advisors or who aren't advisor service providers to comment on. Mm -hmm. Pro prospects are, are reading them and, and um, being influenced and you're building authority. But if you want to actually increase conversations and yeah, increase your comments, open up those posts a little bit, um, you know, bring into your financial post, bring in some pop culture. We had a client on his podcast. He was going through the lyrics to the Beatles song, can't buy me love and talking about his interpretation and, you know, how it, how it related to finances. And that would do so well in a post too, because then you can get into talking about, you know, which, which Beatles song do you know, you know, by heart just because you're making a financial post doesn't mean, doesn't mean that the conversation needs to be financial, yeah. you know, ask well, about the Beatles. And then if people want to comment about the financial part, you know, they can do that too. Yeah. One of the things that I really loved about, about Shannon's post here is if yes. any of you, which, which I think I know a lot of you know Shannon Spotswood. This is so on brand for her. Uh, I mean, she's like a huge physical exercise -y person. In fact, one of her last posts was, you know, her had a little sign next to her Peloton bike. Um, but, 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 so, so every one of these were huge moments uh, that if you aren't aware of, she makes you aware. Right. So, so she, you know, this whole idea of Snoop Dogg, which by the way, was an absolutely wonderful addition to NBC's Olympic lineup, you know, what Noah Lyles did in the 400 was insane. And of course, Simone Biles being, you know, the most decorated, I think, Olympic athlete ever, but look, look, she, she, she engages. And, and so not only do you know, Shannon, for those of you who do, and if you follow her, it's hard not to feel like you have a, a relationship with her, but she asked the question, you know, what's your favorite story so far? And, and asking those sorts of easy questions, not what do you think, Jessica, you had said that before, um, you know, asking those sorts of things so that people can start sharing their favorite Olympic moments or their favorite Olympic stories is just such a wonderfully engaging uh, thing. But, but she, and she also tees you up to make it even easier because you could say, man, you know, Noah Lyles' story was my favorite or gosh, you know, Simone Biles is the, you know, is the goat, um, you know, and of course, you know, my favorite thing was when, you know, Snoop Dogg uh, was, was in the pool uh, with the artistic swimmers, right? And so anyway, so I, I absolutely love those. Yes, you've totally teed up the next. I did. <laughs> Asking a question. Mm. But please, please make it easy. An easy question is one that it's specific. It's really what we said here for testing yourself. Run your question through this test. Can you answer? Like, can you actually answer it? I know I've I've you know gone to write a few questions and then I run it through this test. I'm like, I yeah, I'm not sure how I would answer it. And that's okay. That's just part of having a writing process. So can you answer it? And in only a few words, a bit of a, a pet peeve of mine, in addition to the, like, share your thoughts is the share a story. Like just that wording, there could be a really good question in there, but just the wording of share a story sounds to me like it's asking like, you know, for a time investment, but let's see, let's see what Ariel did here and her posts. Oh my gosh. If you haven't read them. Just absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. And 
this one is all about weird life skill blind spots for her she's saying she has zero sense of direction can't whistle and then at the end so i'm dying to know what's yours or if you're superhuman and don't have any what's the funniest Ooh. one you've ever heard of and she it's interesting here she asks two questions I know some people would say, oh, just only ask one question because you don't want to overwhelm people. But by asking two, she opens it up a little bit so that everyone, everyone can answer. What do you think here, Matt? Yeah. So there's a couple of things about this that that I yes. absolutely love. Uh, the first one is not just another boring financial advisor is her headline. Oh my gosh, that is so fantastic. And just uh, that's everything as far as I'm concerned. I, I just, the rest of the post is wonderful, but I mean, I just wanted to, to go ahead and start there. Um, mm. The other thing that I really like is her pop culture reference. Right. And so, so, you know, having a, a very few of us ever use postscripts, right. Uh, but I, it's such a good one because this was three months ago. So it's getting close to May. Now, if you are a, a millennial and you're a, you know, Justin Timberlake fan, you know exactly what this reference is. Um, I, I I personally didn't understand why I was leaving ramen out, but I think that actually had to do anyway. Uh, but I understood the, the, it's going to be May. Just another wonderful way for you to feel connected to this post and to want to engage the post because, um, oh my God, Shannon said that was because of his hair. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That's so funny. Oh, not that's that. fantastic. All right. Um, well, wow. Now that you say that, wow, his his hair did totally look like a ramen soup. Um, that was the thing. Yeah, I love, so, and I love the, if you're superhuman, but the other thing, and you, you had said this before is, um, there's a level of humility here and approachability here. She yes. starts off by saying, I can't do something. Very few of you do that. It's always about, I can, and I'm smart, and I'm good, and I'm the best. Uh, and that's not, not how she does this. Right. She starts off with a very humbling statement that's going to get that attention mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. then ask you questions to engage. So, yeah. yeah. And, you know, when I share something like that, when Ariel shares something, it's easy for us to share. As like just another thing, I really like how she got this idea from a meme on Facebook. Mm. It's just a really great example of content ideas being all around us and how we can use ideas from other platforms and then, you know, adapt them for LinkedIn. So really, really cool. Yeah. Okay. The last one, start and finish with a bang. There's a psychological tendency. I lost where I wrote it down. I think it's the serial positioning effect. Primacy where... effect. Primacy effect. Oh, I don't know if it's that one. It's, it's where people tend to remember the first and last item in a list more than they remember this more than they remember what's in the middle but my you know my whole point my whole point here is not to overlook the first sentence as something really compelling that people can comment on in you know the comment section we wrote a post for matt a while back you were matt you were going to a conference in florida mm -hmm. and at the top you said florida you know it's the only place on earth that makes you switch to iced coffee in the morning. And then you go on to, you know, explain, you know, what you're going to be talking about at the conference. And there were several comments all about iced coffee. Mm -hmm. So people, people want to comment and be part of the conversation. And I think as our, as you know, content creators, our job is to make it easy for them. Now let's look at this example uh, by Michael. Oh my gosh. Matt, what are your thoughts here? Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah, Drew said serial position effect. I'm sorry, oh, sister. Yes. I, I was going off your notes, Thank man. You. So yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, so, so, so here's the thing. Um, let's also really highlight not only what he wrote. So the first thing in using this, this, uh, this serial position effect, um, Everybody here, in fact, Cheryl Hickerson and I have had a lot of fun conversations about, you know, people, your parents yelling at you at the table, especially when it came to math. So, man, I'm immediately there. I know I I remember. I remember the table. I remember the tablecloth. I remember how I felt. I remember the smells in the room. I remember all of that. Right. Um, and then he just goes right there. Man, I'm much mellower than that. What what a great, great, great post. Um, and then the other thing is, so what are you going to remember? 
hashtag resting business face. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then also, you know, so, and the other thing too, that and Jessica and I were talking about this when we were, we were planning is he doesn't even, it's not even grammatically perfect. He doesn't have an apostrophe after on what's, and he also misspells maybe so that you read it maybe, right? I, love that. I mean, oh, yeah. I love that. I love that. And then my favorite is favorite is favorite part of this entire post is he keeps with the thread, which is perfect. Here's a gold star to Shelly. Right. Oh, I mean, comment. what yes. a wonderful thing in the comments for him to just show that level of continuity. So yeah, this this is a winner of a post. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I love how Shelly responded 21, like in the capital letters as well. So, so good. So uh, yes, this whole point, just a reminder to make your first sentences pop. The first sentence isn't just about catching attention. It's also about stirring up conversation. So, okay. We're on to a new chapter here. Those were the electrifiers. Now we are going to do the live reviews. I'm going to break the fourth wall and, you know, leave the presentation and pull up the posts. And I'm going to post those. I'm going to post them in the chat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to have a look at some engaging posts by advisors. And we'd love for you to weigh in. What are your reactions to the post? Which of the electrifiers do you see at play here? And then we're going, Matt and I will talk about each what else can we learn from these posts? Mm -hmm. Why are they so engaging? Okay. So, oh, and Matt, you'll put the. Yeah, I just put that. I put that in. link in there. Yep. Okay, perfect. I'm going to make my screen a little bit bigger too, just for anyone who's looking. And let me know if anyone would like it to be bigger still. Okay. This is the introduction post. And sorry, Matt, I skipped past you a little bit, a little bit past your slides. So let me just go back to this. Real oh, quick. No, that's, that's, that's okay. Okay. We have, well, thank, okay. Wonderful. Uh, so, okay. so we, we, we really firmly believe that when somebody is trying to search for a financial services professional or a financial services professional is looking for half of the people that are on this webinar, which are marketers and service providers, you have to answer these three things. Now, I keep using Cheryl Hickerson as an example because I think she's like family to me, but I know that she gets me. I know she shares my values and I know, and I do hang out with her socially, right? And so, you know, those are the sorts of things every time that you're writing. When we talked about the, the Ben Lewis criteria on what he's writing and the mindfulness of his sharing and participation, these are the other things that are there too. Um, and, and so Jess, if you, if you want to go ahead and, and bring up this post, because um, sure. he, you know, all three of these are, are such great, great, great examples. So do you, do you want to go first? Yeah, just with my impressions on it. Yeah. Let me just scroll through it a little bit just to give you all an essence in case you're watching what I'm doing here. So Mondo, we've all seen, you know, the introduction post. He has hit two years of posting. So he is doing a reintroduction, talks about his age, Pennsylvania being the pizza capital of the world. Okay. And then about 10 points about himself. And then we have a value proposition here, which is kind of cool. I don't always see this in the introduction post. Mm -hmm. And then if you need help, shoot me a DM with a little keyboard smiley. And then the question, what's the best pizzeria you've ever been to? And then this awesome, awesome photo with him. And I believe that is his, um, his goddaughter. Okay. So I'm just looking in the chat. Okay, I'd love to hear from you all. Which of the engagement electrifiers do you see at play here? Okay. It's definitely zero click. So it's it's absolutely zero click. And and while people are writing some of those, um oh, Jane just said she didn't know that you created the presentations in Canva. Jane, Canva is <laughs> freaking amazing for this. All right. So, so I'm, I'm going to dive into a couple of different things here. Uh, so, so my, my, my first, my first one is, um, 
if you didn't expand this, the two things that are going to show up is I just hit two years on LinkedIn. So I thought it'd be time for a reintroduction in that really wonderful picture of him and his goddaughter. Right. So I also, I kind of mm -hmm. want you guys to think about the fact that we did expand this. Um, <laughs> Cheryl says it's the baby. Um, yes, that, that is huge. Um, you know, the other thing that, that I, 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 I would take issue with immediately uh, is the fact that what is this pizza capital of the world? What are you freaking kidding me? Where's <laughs> old Forge freaking Pennsylvania? Uh, you know, anyway. Um, and so I think that's fun. So he, he said something maybe that's a little bit, maybe he didn't intend on that being, uh, uh, you know, um, controversial, but I probably would have answered that way. I, I really do think that, that this, there, there's just a little bit more here uh, in, in the little here. I think he could have shored that up just a smidge. There's there's a couple of things here that I don't, I mean, really, he drives a Mercedes AMG with red seatbelts. Really? Like that's how you want to be known, but maybe that's part of his brand. That's fine. Um, and then scroll down um, because here's the other thing that I don't know if any of you noticed. He's got a Five Nights at Freddy's poster behind him, which is a horror video game, uh, which is I just think that's incredibly ironic that his goddaughter's birthday, they have the Five Nights at Freddy's. But so um, so we had, we had uh, uh, Rose said, asking a fun question, um, you know, uh, Shannon said that she noticed the Five Nights at Freddy's thing. Um, but but the the big engagement thing here is he asked a question, right? He absolutely made it zero click. There are no clicks here, right? He used the invisible force because he's trying to get people to know him and engage with him and and have this post be very, very mindful. Uh, and then the beginning and the end popped uh, because he asked the question and of course, you know, the wonderful picture of of him and his goddaughter. so. Yeah. And if I were to, you know, say have my first conversation with him, there are so many things <clears throat> that I can talk about. Mm -hmm. um, like he's really into shoes. And I think that's so fun. Mm -hmm. And again, by the way, I'd love to see another post with this shoe collection. Um, so there's so many content ideas here, but if I were on a call with him and I love shoes or I collect something, that's definitely what I'm going to be talking about. So just so many icebreakers here, not just, you know, to exist on LinkedIn, but to go into maybe a discovery call as well. And that's what I really, really like about this post. And I remember when this sort of introduction post was really popular on Instagram. Yeah. And then it seemed to come over to LinkedIn and so many people were doing it. And now it's a bit of a standard post. And I, and I think for a good reason, because, the idea is to, you know, re-engage our, our network and reach new people. Like, you know, look at the engagement on this. No doubt he's, he's reaching new people. So any advisor can do this post and it's fun. You can think about a milestone. It could be how, you know, how long you've been on LinkedIn. It could be that you've reached new followers. It could be that it's your birthday like it could be anything and if it seems overwhelming to come up with this list you could always structure it around a theme um you know sorry to say you know summer summer starting to pass us by so it could be summer themed and you know let's reflect on summer like your favorite summer book or summer vacation spot so some ideas for you but let's move on okay Oh my gosh, Ben Galloway yeah. is here. We've been using your name in vain the entire time and I didn't know you were here. All right, I, I uh, so so I actually, Jessica, I got ahead of it. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm gonna put in the, the link. Um, he says he's been busy blushing. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, listen, we have a free resource for you for all of you who've been staying on. We really appreciate it. This is a great tool. There's a link in the chat um, for all of you to understand that there are, we, we've done this a few times, 8,000. Um, and so these are uh, examples of how you can write personal posts just to prime the pump a little bit, unless you're concerned about what you should say or what you shouldn't say. This is absolutely fantastic. All right, we've got the nostalgic post, which uh, please click on the link because we really want you guys to see this one. Um, this this one is fantastic. Yes, yes. And for the sake of time, I'm going to go a little bit, a little bit faster here. But oh my gosh, um, you know, nostalgia evokes such positive feelings. Studies have shown this, and you know, you're able to share this, you know, this collective experience. You know, where I'm going through the chat, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I used to play with Stretch Armstrong. 
you know, his dog mostly, but I used to do that. And now we're talking about that. And now we have something in common and it creates such shareable content. Let's look at, so I'm trying to get out of this. Let's look at our next example written by our client, Mark Hansen. Mm -hmm. And Matt, you'll put this in the chat, eh? I did. I did. I already put oh, it in the perfect, chat. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Sorry. Okay. So just skimming through it, he stole something from his grandmother <laughs> and it turned out to be his childhood Legos that he played um, with, you know, at her house. So thinking about those engagement electrifiers, what do you all see? We had zero click content, asking an easy question. I'm just throwing them out there. Um, looking at the key findings, Matt, I see the multiple images mm -hmm. at work here. And then also the starting and finishing with a bang. Like this, like this yeah. first line, what do you mean you stole? What do you mean you stole from your grandmother? Like it's it's so compelling that I have to read more. Matt, what do you think about this one? Well, so so Rose said asking a question, zero click. Shannon said yes. several pictures. Rose then again said popping intro. So so uh, yes. For, first off, one of the neat things, and, and we like to say this a lot, is content begets content. And he could do 10 more posts off this philosophy here because what he could do is use the answers to create more and more posts and you know maybe show more of his lego collection right uh, that would be really really neat and engaging for him uh because it's it's very very on brand um, i know there, there are a couple of things that, and I know why he did this, but I think he just did it a little bit too much. Um, there's a little too much white space. Now we talk about white space often to make sure that there's space in the post for people to digest things. But, but I think he used, I think he used white space a little bit too much. Um, but honestly, that is my only critique of this post. I, I'm a huge Lego fan myself. Um, so are my children. I just, I even feel a stronger connection, but my favorite thing is the opening line of this post. It's time to come clean. Last yes. week, I stole something from my grandmother. If that doesn't want, doesn't make you want to read the post, um, I, I don't really know how else to get your attention. I know. He could totally republish this and maybe just remove the white space and yep. that would be amazing. I'd love to see a, a post with Mark, you know, today in his Lego, now that we know they're in his possession. I expect to see that. And a prompt for all of you, we're asking, you know, what is your favorite childhood toy and why did it mean so much to you? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be anything super serious or profound. It could just be really silly. Like it was fun. I like that the Stretch Armstrong you can... Yeah. I don't know, stretch it out <laughs> and hopefully it didn't break. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to our next one. And I think, yeah, Matt, do you want to touch on this? Before we I do. In. Uh, so we talk about the perfect content formula here often, uh, storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action. And, and your call to action doesn't have to be buy my product. Your call to action can be answer my question, right? But as you can see, all of the posts that we've been sharing today fit really, really well into this perfect content formula. There's every one of them has had an entertainment factor. Every one of them is telling you either a little bit about who they are as a person or, or what they want to teach you, much like the conspiracy theory post that we put earlier. Uh, and then I love the idea that that every one of them has a small, if not larger, storytelling component to it. But my my the best part is the varying calls to action. It's not always subscribe to my podcast, follow me on social media, buy my product, set an appointment. It can just be engaging questions because then when you get buying signals, these micro yeses, right, then you can hopefully build that into your sales pipeline and make it so that you can convert some of these people to clients someday. Okay. Let's look at our last example, irresistibly relatable stories. And I have no notes because I think we should just, we just have to jump right into this example from Steven. So um, I, I just put the link in the, in the chat again. It, and for those of you who don't know Steven, you have to know Steven. Um, 
she is one of the most genuine beams of sunshine you're ever going to meet in your life. And actually just scroll down, Jess, because I want to show an okay. example of the beamingness, which is this wonderful picture of her, you know, mm -hmm. as a child. And the fact that you can see the smile and the eyes are still exactly who she is. Um, you know, th this is, this is the essence, but let, let's talk about the storytelling component of this mm -hmm. with how she even set this up. So she's got, she's got the hook right at the beginning. Right. And in third person. And in third That's person. Why I say this pops because you yeah. did not expect that. You know, in, in in all of the, you know, relatable trials and tribulations that she had with her name. And we all had those things growing up. And and we would love for you to share them in the chat. Um, you know, what what were the things that you were wildly self-conscious about when you were growing up um that have now become a superpower of yours? Her whole brand is called the girl named Steven, right? She is so leaned into this. She leaned into her height. She leaned into the fact that she's physically really, really adept. Her kinesthetic sort of, uh, you know, awareness is super, super high. Um, you know, she was too tall back then. Now, you know, I mean, 5'10", she's still tall. Um, but, you know, she's 50 now. It just such a beautiful flow to the story mm -hmm. just such a nice warm introduction if you don't know her but if you do it reinforces that this is the reason why you like know and trust steven because she's this honest and transparent i absolutely i i i love this post and and Thank by you. the way if you're not following any of these people you need to follow uh and then there you go there's the question um and the crazy yeah. thing was people answered it yeah, because wouldn't you maybe wonder, like, it's a little bit of a risk. Are people going to answer? Because this yes. is small talk here. It's, you yeah. know, one of my big insecurities from my childhood. Uh, uh, bam. And I then love. she reinforces that, look, look, look at her reinforcement. Such a beautiful, warm way to make the people participating in this post yes. feel listened to, feel heard and respected. Yeah, this, this is... um this is Thanks really for great. Your story, yes, phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. And Rose yeah. says she loves this one and would totally engage with it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. All right. Shall we keep moving, Matt? Uh, yeah. Well, we have four minutes left, sister. We gotta, we gotta I, wrap this puppy to. up. So. Okay. Let me pop back in to the presentation. All right. So, so the long and the short of all of this is, is our goal is to always continuously provide you all with great information so that if you decide to hire us or not, you can make some fundamental changes within your social media posts, within your content marketing strategy, and with what we call your social proof strategy so that when people look for you, they know who you are, what you do, why you do it, and why they should care. Um, but but again, we can do this for you. This is what we do every day, all day. As I hinted earlier, we've done now 8,000 episodes and almost 100,000 social media posts for financial advisors. We've got a very, very robust team of people who specialize specifically in helping you rise above the noise and be your own loud. And if you want to know more, uh, guess what? Uh, you guys can just get time on my calendar. Uh, and so, oh, I forgot. Well, uh, testimonial. Yeah. By the way, we're really good at what we do. I love Larry's quote, but we're going to move on. Um, just go ahead and scan that QR code. You can email me at matt at proudmouth.com. You can DM me uh, on social media, especially on LinkedIn. I'm there all the time. Jessica knows that. I, spe I actually spend those time allocations um, on LinkedIn every single solitary day. And we're here to help you. I am not here to sell you into a product. I am here to show you if there is anything that Proudmouth can do to help you. We have lots and lots of different things that we can help you with. But if you want to truly outsource your content marketing strategy to experts who do this every day just to help you stop being the best kept secret in your area, we would absolutely love to be able to help you. So uh, listen, everybody, I want to thank you so much. This is the most robust chat uh, we've had in a while and <laughs> a little bit distracting. Uh, I'm sorry. And by the way, Jessica, I was trying to figure out why, why I had muted myself because I don't normally do that. My dog was freaking out upstairs and I, I don't know what was going on. And I don't know if anybody could hear my dog. And so uh, I forgot to take myself off mute because I didn't want you all hear the, the, the doggy barking. Um, it, here's the other thing it, is please, please, also follow Jessica, please. You know, we don't have our social media up there, but if, if you all want to really see what great social media looks like um, and how Jessica manages it for herself while she is also, you know, our, our director of 
basically, you know, content, dark content strategy person. You know, she's also the producer of the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. Um, look, Jessica, you know, people are saying how awesome you are. That's so awesome. Because uh, I agree too. I think Jessica is absolutely fantastic. So uh, if you want to learn more about our products and services, please go ahead and just click on that QR code. Or if you have any questions, you can just go ahead and DM me on LinkedIn. So with that, I want to thank everybody for their time today. You guys have been a fantastic audience. We appreciate you and uh, pay attention. Uh, we're doing this every other week and we've got some great stuff coming down the pipeline. So thanks everybody. Thanks everybody.